finally the free version of this strategy. You guys have inboxed me. I think all like 6,000 something of you have probably sent me a message asking for this version. And I am finally getting this out to you. So for those of you who do not have the paid membership and are interested in the LMI strategy, this is for you. For those of you who do have the paid membership and are using the LMI, I want you to still watch this video because there are things that I'm going to do in here that I do not do in the LMI video. The one that uh, I will tag here, that one is just for like the basics of what the strategy, it's the, it's the foundation of the strategy. I'm simply showing you a very easy version of how to do it. That is not to say that is the only way to trade that strategy. I want to put a big disclaimer in here right now. I'm going to ask Cardi to figure out how to do that. Um, and I will flash a disclaimer sign up here that this is not a strategy at all that is meant for beginners. So many of you have messaged me saying that you are like saying it's so easy. You make it look so simple and it can be simple once you understand the basics of everything else. But I want to make sure that you guys are still doing that. And I don't think that a lot of people are. And that is a problem. And that is where you're going to have losing trades. When you're doing your markups and you're entering in on trades that don't make sense how to enter them. So I want those of you who are using the LMI still to watch this video. And instead of using the RSI, just use your LMI. But I am going to walk you through a trade setup of how I would trade and why I would trade and what I mean when I tell you to trade zone to zone and like how you would help filter out some of those trades you really shouldn't be taking. And maybe that will help clarify why you're seeing some losing trades when you're doing markups. And when I'm looking at your markups, I'm like, well, you should have never taken that trade. So hopefully this will help for both, whether you're free, a free member or whether you are a paying member. Here are your rules. If you want to screenshot them, if you want to take a picture, whatever you want to do, go ahead and do that now. I'm going to quickly run through them, but you will see how I apply them in the actual trade example I go through with you. So one, you want to identify your time frame you want to trade. This strategy works on any time frame. I primarily like to do it on the 15, but you guys can do whatever you want. I'm going to show you an example on a one hour because some of you have asked to have higher time frame trades. So I will show you that example just to kind of accommodate people on their request. I get it. Scalping on a five minute and 15 minute time frame for those of you who work a normal job, that is very hard to do when you're at work. The one hour is kind of easier as far as getting in and managing the trade if you are working a normal job. But any time frame will work. You want to identify the time frame you are interested in actually trading off of. Then number two, you are going to mark up your support and resistance zones on a higher time frame. So for example, if you are going to be trading the five minute time frame, you will use the 15 minute as your support and resistance zones. If you are going to be trading the 15 minute time frame, you're going to use the one hour for your support and resistance zones. If you are going to trade the one hour, you're going to mark up on the four hour time frame. And you're going to do the four hour, you will mark up on the daily. Then you will drop down to your actual time frame where you want to take your entry on, and you will then mark up your minor support and resistance levels. You will look to the left of your charts. You want to repeat whatever is happening in the market and look and see history will repeat itself. So look for that. You want to look and kind of mimic where are those areas and mark it up because the market will trade within those areas. And that's how you're going to be creating your support and resistance zones. And we will trade from zone to zone. You want an overall trend, an idea of how it's going. I do not want you to trade against the trend right now. Those of you who are experienced, I will make you a whole separate video showing you that, but you are not going to be counter trend trading in this example that I'm showing you. If you are that experienced though, you probably will get the idea of how to counter trend within here, um, but I'm not going to show you an example of that because I do not want to confuse people who are just starting and still trying to become profitable because so many of you are having this issue that you're just taking trades wherever and not understanding why you shouldn't be taking certain ones. So 
please make sure that you identify the overall trend and you're looking for entries within that trend to be trading in that direction. At this point, after you have marked up your charts, you have identified your trend, you then can look at your indicators. Please, 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 for the love of God, stop looking at your indicators first. You guys are just looking at indicators and forgetting about all of the basics that you're supposed to be doing before you even look at those indicators. So it is not just you look at your two indicators and that's it. I did not come up with some magical strategy here. I promise you, if I had, I would be a bazillionaire and 95% of people in the market would be winning and not losing. I came up with a decent strategy that works well with risk management, but requires you to actually know a little bit about what you're doing. So please do the Ford work that you need to do and do that and then come in and look at your indicator. Number six is RSI. We can finally put on your indicators. We're going to load it on. I'll show you what it is. It's just standard settings, uh, but we do change the, the level. So we'll change to a 50 and a 50. So your 70 that I believe it comes standard with and your 30, we're going to change those to 50 and 50. I'll show you that in the video. Stochastic RSI crossing in the direction that the RSI is telling you to go. So I will show you that as well and uh, standard settings for the stochastic RSI as well. Once they all line up, you can enter your trade. You can risk manage appropriately. However, that works for your account. I'm not gonna get into that in this video because that would be a very lengthy video and everyone's account is different. So that is up to you to figure it out, but uh, please make sure that you are doing appropriate risk management. You guys, you guys, the one thing I get the most from you is your strategy worked, but I was greedy and I held too long and I was in profit, but it didn't hit my take profit because I put it like some insanely long place like that doesn't, it didn't belong and I shouldn't, I should have closed out sooner or whatever happened. And you guys, it's because you're greedy. You're greedy. Stop being greedy. You're not going to have these massive trades. Like, especially if you're just learning the strategy, you have to learn it. And just be happy with whatever profits you're getting. If you see a number that makes you happy, close the trade. Stop holding these trades because it didn't hit your take profit. If you watch my previous video, um, the divergence video on my phone, you'll see that I was pretty close to my take profit too, I believe, in that video. And I actually tell you in the video that I'm so close to it, but I'm like not 100% sure it's going to make it exactly to where I marked it. So I closed my trade because I was already in profit and I was happy with the number that I saw. So please make sure you are taking your profits. If you are close to your take profit area and you're getting a little unsure about what the market might do, close your trade. All right, so here's our example we're going to be doing. We are on NASDAQ 100 on the one hour chart. Right up here, you can see all of that. I, like I said earlier in the intro, we are doing a one hour chart markup and that is just because I have had this heavily requested, but it will work on any time frame. Please just make sure you are using a higher time frame for your major support and resistance zone for your top and your bottom of your areas that you want to be trading with it. In this case, we are using the one hour, like I said, so I'm going to show you it on a four hour. I did pre-mark this for you guys just so that way I can save time and not have to worry about doing all that to try and keep these videos a little bit shorter because I know they get long. As you can see here, we I just marked uh, up areas that we've been seeing the market hit. So you can see lots of touches all along here. So more touch and we've just been sitting recently on the four hour chart just hitting lots of resistance in this price range. So this was the area I liked as far as the top for my four hour time frame as a major uh, resistance zone. As far as a major support zone, I really liked down here. As you can see, when you're looking over to the left, we have lots of areas where we just have touches. So uh, as far as the most recently where the market's been the lowest low that I've seen recently, you know, as, and this is four hour chart, so this is a couple of days worth but you can see that was the lowest low. So I went on that one as far as my support level. So that is step number two. We are 
Good. We identified we want to enter on the one hour time frame. Step one. Step two is come up to your higher time frame and mark off your support and resistance zones, your higher ones. Now we're going to go to step three, which is go back to your entry time frame. And you are going to mark off your minor support and resistance zones using whatever is over to the left of the market to identify this. I don't go all the way over, but you guys can see, I will scroll out so you can actually see these areas where price, where I've marked price has touched multiple times and kind of created these little zones. This one as well, touches and touches. You could go over, I mean, as far as you want, but it's not necessary. I would just say you need to go over maybe a couple of days, maybe a week or so back. Um, you don't have to go too crazy going over. You just want to know where has price been? You may, if price hasn't been there in a long time or has never been there in some of the currencies that you might trade, you will have to kind of use your own idea and just be smart about what you are marking up. If that is the case, use an ATR calculator to figure out what is the average movement so you can have a smarter thought process behind where you're take profiting and not just guessing. But in these examples, price has been there a lot since we are trading consolidation. So this is not that hard. You actually get a lot of touches in areas. So make sure you are using those. Use the price action to your advantage. Price wants to go where price has been before. It has areas that it clearly likes to be. So we want to be marking them up as important key areas and trading to those areas and then just getting the profit in between them. All right. So that is number three as far as our rules go. Number four is the trend. Uh, this is, we're in the downtrend. You can, I mean, you don't have to overthink this, guys. You don't need to be drawing crazy trend lines and everything. Just a general idea. Where has the trend been recently? If you haven't made a new higher high, then you're in a downtrend. If you haven't made a new lower low, then you're in an uptrend. Don't, don't go too crazy. This is so much consolidating. It's hard to kind of figure it out. I know some of you go a little bit nutty with trying to figure it out. and You'll send me insane markups and all kinds of stuff. Don't overthink it. Keep it simple. If it's down, I mean, this is down. It's This was the high, and it's not there now, so we're still in a downtrend. Just think of it that way, okay? I know some of you are going to be like, but it looks like it's going up. Kind of and kind of not. Just remember you're within this zone here, between this zone and this zone. You are trading within that still. So until it breaks out of one of those and declares itself, you're not really in a trend. So the closest thing you can see as far as a trend goes is that you have broken through this area where you've had this resistance hit it and broken through this area of support and now come to another zone. So that is part, that is classifying me as like a downtrend. And you have stayed within this area now. So I'm going to say we're in a downtrend. I know some of you will mess this up a little bit. Um, don't focus too much on the trend aspect of it all. Just know that like if you see it dropping or going up like that, I mean, go with the trend. Consolidation can get a little tricky, but that's how I would trade consolidation is I would be looking at what, where has it broken through as far as my zones. And this is clearly in a new zone, so to me that's a downtrend. And so this would come back up and through here, then I would say it was an uptrend. If I lost you there, don't stress about it too much. That kind of gets more into counter trend trading and I don't want to confuse too many people here. All right, so now we can move on to number five, which is indicators, where it starts getting fun. So we are going to do the free indicators. Like I said, all free stuff, very exciting. We are doing the basic RSI, first one you get on there. Nothing too exciting about it, except that we're going to change the settings. Um, so we are going to change these. You do not need to do the standard settings. You're gonna change it to 50 and 50. That's what you want your bands to be, upper and lower. Middle can stay however you want. And I do like to change the color of my RSI. And for the purposes of YouTube, apparently when I upload these, all my colors look really dim and very hard to see. So I'm going to try and make them brighter and a little bit larger for you guys. I like my bands to not be dotted. That's just a personal thing. Uh, so I'm gonna change that. You guys can do whatever color scheme is whatever you want but you just need a straight line set at 50 going through the middle here and whatever color you want. As far as the RSI goes, what you're looking for is this white line at 50. If it is above it, you're looking for buys. If it is below it, you are looking for sells. 
It is that simple. It is literally just there to help you detect the trend or to help you detect which way you would want to be looking for the market. So let's get our next one on, which is our stochastic RSI. Second one there on the list. And this is gonna be standard settings as well. I'm telling you standard settings because I like it that way. I think it looks better because I trade on the 15 minute chart or higher. If you are somebody who does one to five minutes, you may want to change uh, your one setting. You might want to change it to, you would if you want to trade on one minute to five minute, which is absolutely nutty to me, but if that's your thing, have at it. Um, but you would be changing the stochastic length to eight if you want to. Some people like it on 14 still too, whatever your preference is, but I personally keep it on 14 because I trade 15 minutes or higher. If you're on the five minute and you're toggling between like 15 and five, just keep it standard. If you're one minute or five minute, go to eight. And then as far as style goes, keeps it totally, everything standard, nothing changes. Everything's the same. You can change colors and stuff if you want, but I don't do any of that. All right, so stochastic RSI, what you would be looking for is for this to match up with your actual RSI. So you want to be looking for your RSI first and deciding are we looking to buy or are we looking to sell? And that would help you then decide for your stochastic. Do you want to be buying or do you want to be selling? What you want them to do is be lined up. So in a situation like, I will mark this for you, you can see. In a situation like this where you are close to the 50 and just either crossing above it or kind of coming back to it and retesting it to go up, in this case where you come down, kind of come up above it, come back down to it, but it shoots back up, that's okay. Some of you have asked if it's way off of the white line like this, don't mess with it. That move is done. It is exhausted. Wait till it comes back and then goes back up. Or by you could do the reversal. Um, but you do not want to be doing anything far off of it. Same thing here. This is too far gone. If you're trying to get in all the way up here, you want to be getting in close to the white line. It's okay if it's a little bit away from it, but you want to be as close to it as possible. Ideally, your stochastic RSI would be in either, if you're looking for a buy, you would want to be getting the price low. So you would be looking for it to be undersold or vice versa. If you were looking for a sell, ideally you would be getting it high and overbought and looking for it at a higher price to get a, sell it off to a lower price. It is not required that it be in either one of these zones, the overbought or undersold. Please do not get yourself stressed out over that. A lot of you have asked if that's required. It is not. Just be aware that when it is in these zones, the move may be starting to get exhausted. As you can see, this is too far away and this is too far away and your move is exhausted. You've already missed the move. So just wait until it happens again. There's always another move to come. So you actually do get another move and entry here. So I will mark this quickly for you. If you are looking here, your stochastic is in the buy. So we're looking to buy and your, sorry, your RSI is in the buy. It's above the 50. So you're looking to buy and your stochastic RSI is crossing up as in a, to buy. So it all lines up and you can see on this candle, actually you would have been given the entry. So this little candle here would have been your entry candle. Um, in this particular case, you would have to figure out your stop losses. This is a pretty heavy candle to put your stop loss under. And I would be looking for a minor support and resistance zone within this zone here, between this one and this one. And that would probably be around this area. Actually, if you're looking, you see all of these hits that the market kind of sits at. So in this case, I would probably be putting it there. You would be looking in this case to be buying. I would probably be having my stop loss right around where all these candle wicks are rejecting off of and this little zone is sitting at. So somewhere in there. And then as far as your take profit, you would be targeting the next zone. So the top of that zone, which you can see there. And we're going over into our other example here. So make sure you're targeting the top of that zone area or the highest high or however you want to do it there. You could be targeting it that way. You could be doing your one to one, one to 1.5. 1 
However you want to do that would be fine. Um, please just make sure that you're taking into consideration your uh, spreads and commissions if you have anything like that to be worrying about. And depending on the time of night, in this case of this example, it's like 6 o'clock at night, so there would probably be a pretty heavy spread. So if you're looking for it to hit like up, up at this support zone, you might want to go smaller on it just so that way you're not going, like go a little bit under there just so you're covering the spreads and your commissions because the market might come up, like you can see here, it does come up, but it might not actually hit that area due to like spreads or things like that. So that would be an entry that you would see and you would take in. Um, so that's how that would work. I'm gonna show you how this actually plays out in real time though, but that is the type of situation we are looking for to happen in order to be able to get a move. Alright, make sure you guys can see all this, so I'm going to always zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. Alright, here we go. We will start it in the little replay button. Alright, so as you can see, this candle prints. We are looking at this point to work between this zone and this zone. Don't get, this is where price is right now. I know it's red, but I don't want to confuse you guys, but we're looking to work between here. So we have this candle print. Our stick, or RSI comes right below the white line, which I like. And my stochastic RSI is now telling me that I am going down into a selling position. That is my entry. That is an entry candle. So I like to mark my candles like this. So you guys will see a lot of times if you work with me that I put these little horizontal lines. But for the purpose of making this video... I will leave this up and I will take off the line. But just so you guys know, that is my entry. I like to see everything line up. It makes it more clear for me. But just so you understand, that is the entry candle. You are entering at the close of candle and you are putting your stop loss slightly above the previous zone. So in this case, this is a zone of resistance. We're going slightly above that. Like I said, make sure you're taking into account your spreads or commissions or whatever you need to do to figure out to make sure that the, it works out for you. But for me, this is where I would be putting it if I was trading this. Right above these wicks, you can see this is quite a heavy zone of touches. So you want to be just slightly above it in case the market comes up and hits that area and like wicks a little bit. And then we can do our take profit. So you see I have here already marked up on here is my take profit one. This is a, another area you can see all these touches. When we were doing our markups for our support and resistance on our minor zones, this is obviously something very, very heavily hit. Okay, so that's where you put the stop loss. And then we can see that I went through and just marked up take profit areas one, two, three, and four. This is optional to go this heavy as far as one, two, three, and four, but you absolutely need to take profit one, obviously. So for me in this example, I kind of went closer to like a one-to-one -one risk to reward if you're looking. Um, it is slightly under it as far as where I would mark it, but like I, I am a little more cautious when I want my take profits where I put them. Most people may have actually gone a little bit lower, like to these ends of these wicks where you can see. That is a personal preference if you want to be a wick trader or not. I tend to be more of a body trader just because this does wick a lot. So if you are trading this strategy with something that is volatile, like the cryptos or gold that wicks, that is up to you whether you decide to use bodies or wicks. I don't trade either of those with this strategy. So I do not know how well it works with them. But if you are interested in trying it out, please let me know. I would love to know your feedback on it. Um, but also just know I do not know how you would or would not include the wicks. With the indices, it is up to you. Wicks still work. As you can see, you have touches here and here. And it would still work out. Um, I just go a little more cautious because I just like to have where price has been even more. To me, I'd rather have the safety of knowing that price has been here. I don't even know. You see all these millions of touches that has got here uh, versus just like three or four wicks that have touched the other price. So I am a little more cautious when it comes to um, my take profit actual area. So I would be kind of like in this zone. But you could have went exactly for a one-to-one -one risk to reward, which would have been right at the bottom of the wick areas. And that would have given you a better, like, one on your first take profit. You would have had a better 
one-to-one -one risk to reward if you're looking here. Then you can see uh, that we go to, I mark up to take profit two. Sorry, I'm moving all my stuff around on you guys now. Okay, so we go to take profit two, and that is this line here. I just looked over to the left for take profit two, and you can see where I'm marking it. This is another zone. You can clearly see that you're trading within. So I wanted that as far as my next take profit. Take profit three was the um, bottom of that zone, this area. That's what I was looking for. And take profit four for me was just the break in the actual structure of what we're trading here between the two bigger zones that we placed on the four hour time frame. So if we actually broke through this level of support on the higher four hour time frame, that would have been like anything below that would have been my take profit for. So now that we have our trade and we know an idea of where we wanted to go, how it's marked and all that, I'm going to set it up to actually play out for you guys so you can watch. All right, so I'm going to start the replay again so you guys can see how this trade plays out and how I would manage it as it goes along now that we know where our stop losses and our take profit areas are. So we have our entry candle, we are in our trade, and we will watch it and see what happens. All right, gonna pause it here so you can see our take profit one gets smashed here. So you got your profits from that. That is awesome. If you are trading with stacking your trades, those of you who follow me know that I stack my trades. So at this point, I would have one entire trade closed out, potentially two, um, but that's just the way that I trade. If you are somebody who is only taking one trade at a time, you, at this point, you need to be taking partials of your trade. Do not just sit there and hold all the way from take profit one to take profit two to take profit three and trail all along. That is a bad idea because this type of market needs to move. Um, if you're trading something like the indices, if you're trading a more boring, stable pair, you might be able to get away with trailing it, but I still think it's just not worth the risk. To be honest, you just should take your partial, take your profits. Like I said, rule number nine, don't be greedy. So if it hits your take profit one, you should be taking at least 50% of your trade off of the table. So however you figure it out, whatever your lot is, you need to be taking 50% partials or if you're stacking your trades, you are closing at least one of them out at this point. All right, so we'll keep moving along. And your stop loss here is even though we hit take profit one, I have not moved my stop loss yet. Even though I broke through this zone here, which and I'm now in this new zone between take profit one and take profit two, I have not gotten a confirmation candle saying that I'm not coming back up into this previous zone yet. So until I get that confirmation candle, which would be the next candle, we will see what it make, does to make that decision. Then I'll decide if I want to actually move my stop loss or not. I like to wait until I am one zone away from my previous stop loss. So in this case, it's up here and we've only gone one zone. So until I'm out of this second zone here, I won't move my stop loss. So we'll continue to watch and see how it plays out. So take profit two, get smashed. So this is where we can now move. So uh, as you can see, take profit one, hit, no problem. That was already done. We talked about that. Now take profit two here at this line has been hit. You can see the market comes down, smashes through that. This previous zone now that I was saying I wanted to see it clear before I move my stop loss has been cleared. And this candle has printed and closed now in that new zone. So at this point, I can move my stop loss to slightly in profit. So I would move my stop loss. Just imagine we are entering, like I said here, oh, this is going to mess me up. There we go. We entered at the bottom of this candle. We're going to move it slightly in profit. And like always, make sure you're covering spreads and commissions or whatever that is. But basically, you are ensuring at this point that you cannot lose this trade. You have already now won take profit one, and you've won take profit two, and you are now completely risk-free in this trade because you have moved your stop loss to just slightly in profit. So no matter what happens at this point, you have won at least all three of your trades if you stack them, 
or you 100% have guaranteed that you are making money and not potentially losing anything if you are taking partials. So take profit one, you took 50% of your trade if you took partials. Take profit two, you are taking 25% of your trade if you are taking partials and you left it open. So you should have another 25% of your trade remaining to run. If you're stacking, obviously you're closing them out however you want to do that. All right, so we are now completely risk-free. We will see how the trade plays out. All right, take profit three, just got smashed. That was this red line here. Totally get smashed, so now you have one, take profit one, take profit two, and take profit three. If you stack them, your trade got closed out. If you are taking partials at this point, you can now decide if you want to take the remaining of your trade, which is 25% on that lot size you took, or do you want to only take like 15% or potentially even more and allow another allow that 10% to run for its potential take profit for. Keep in mind you are completely risk-free, but don't be stupid and give away money. So I suggest you take at least 15% and only leave 10% or less running if you're doing partials for your take profit for. And that way, if it comes back and hits your stop loss, no big deal. As far as moving your stop loss, since we have now broken through this zone here, and are now in this one, and we have hit smashed in one candle, our take profit three, what I would suggest you do is look at the situation here, and you need to decide whether you want to move your stop loss or not. This is optional. You are already completely risk-free, and this is up to you guys if you want to continue to hold a take profit four or not. Like I said, um, it is up to you. If you don't mind holding it and you don't care, then you can hold it as long as you want. If you want to, you can be a little more aggressive and you feel like you're fine with potentially getting stopped out at this point because you have already won take profit one, take profit two, take profit three, and you're not sure if you're going to actually get take profit four. You can then at that point move your stop loss to just above this zone here and just let it kind of bounce around. Chances are if you do that, though, you will be wicked out and probably hit your stop loss rather quickly. If you you were trying to hold this longer term and you don't mind holding the longer trades and you're just like, it's fine, I don't mind. Then what you could do is what I suggest you do is always is trading one zone away from your stop loss area. So in this particular case, if it was me taking this trade, I would not be looking to move my stop loss yet. Even though my stop loss is up here between this zone and this zone here, is um, technically one zone away from where I would be moving it. I'm not going to do that yet because I need another candle to tell me that I'm good to stay in this zone here and not potentially be backing back up into this take profit two zone. So we will see. So until I get that, I'm going to leave my stop loss right here slightly in profit. So you will see how that plays out. So this is exactly... A perfect example of what I'm talking about where one candle alone pushes you right back up into take profit two zone. So if you did the first example or the first version of what I said where you just moved your stop loss just above this zone, you got taken out of your trade at this point, which is totally fine. Like I said, most people don't like holding super long if you don't have to. You've already won take profit one, take profit two, take profit three, and take profit four was already in profit, so you won some money out of take profit four, you won the take profit two amount on take profit four. If I lost you there, pause the video, go back, rewatch it. I know I just threw a lot of take profits at you, but the point is, is that you won all four of your trades still. You won money on all four versions of it, whether you stack them or you took partial, regardless, you won that trade. If you, though, however, wanted to do, like I said, where I like to trade a zone apart, my point in saying this is that until I've had a confirmation candle after breaking into a new zone, the second candle that prints after is kind of my confirmation candle, whether I can stay in that zone or not. This second candle afterwards clearly tells me I can't stay in just zone, this take profit three zone. I'm going back into take profit two, and I expect it to bounce around, and then if I see it come back again, I can move. So we'll play it out and see what happens. 
All right, so we're back in take profit three. We're teasing it. We're kind of teetering in take profit two. You see it's testing that zone and finally breaks through and closes under it. Okay, so at this point is when I would tell you, you could now move your stop loss and you could actually move it to put it just, um, we would be just above take profit one area here. So it would look something like this. We would be moving it now. Oh, just kidding. We would be moving it now right about there. And our, remember our entry was all the way up here. So we're securing this amount to let it run. And the reason is, is because I want to leave one zone between me and the where my stop loss is, just in case the market needs to whip a little bit. But ideally we're sitting in take profit three zone and targeting what we would hope for for a take profit four area, which would be a break in structure. And as far as this goes, we'll play it out um, and we'll go from there. You can see it's still just testing in this take profit three zone, pushing it out, trying to test it out, breaks out a little, oh, peaks out. And we'll see if it stays, no, not staying out. Coming back up to test, back up to this area. Pushing down, trying to push out, no, rejection. And trying to push back up again. At this point, I want to point out that keep an eye, if you're kind of sitting in this type of consolidation, and mind you, we're on the one hour chart, so this is getting to be a pretty lengthy trade now. You can see from the time you entered back here all the way over to here, like this is a pretty heavy trade as far as time goes. You're definitely intraday to swing trading this. What I would like to point out here is that, yes, this is off hours that you're trading. If you're looking at the time stamps underneath there on the bottom down here, um, when I'm hovering through this time, you can see this is all off market hours. So um, I am an Eastern Standard Time, so I am on the normal New York session type. Of, so this is all normal hours as far as when the market actually is open. And you can see this is middle of the night. So it's not unusual that it would sit in consolidation like this. But just be mindful that when you're doing that and you start seeing your RSI start to kind of like creep back up to the 50 mark zone, you might want to start to think about closing this trade because you're looking at potentially having a trend reversal and you don't want to get stuck in that. So if you're starting to hold a trade and you're waiting for like a take profit four at this point in this trade, I would have been closing it out a long time ago just because you're sitting here in all of this and your RSI is slowly starting to creep back up to your 50. So you want to be able to make sure you're getting out with some of your profits and ideally you'd be getting out with profits in this zone and not going all the way back up here and hitting your stop loss uh, that you had moved in like stop your stop loss that's in profit still, but you'd be getting a take profit one amount on that when you could be getting somewhere around like a take profit two, potentially a take profit three amount. If I lost you again on that, like I said, pause the video, go back, replay it a couple of times till it sinks in. But that is how I would be looking to get like out of this trade would be if I'm holding it this long and I'm seeing the RSI is getting closer and closer and that would be my absolute confirmation. So this previous candle back here, when it crosses, it touches it, I would have absolutely been out of that trade. As you can see, the next candle pushes up and would have hit your stop loss anyhow at your take profit one. Still would have been a winning trade and you still would have had profits, but obviously it would have been smarter to get out in this area, take profit two or take profit three, when the market is telling you it's going up. So that is how you could kind of get out if you're holding for longer and not sure what to do. Once you see it coming back to the 50, you should be a little aware that maybe it could potentially be looking at a, a reversal. Um, and that is it for this trade, you guys. I think that that's pretty much all I can really tell you as far as this particular markup. I will pause this video and I will edit in another version and I will quickly show you just a couple of markups on regular pairs. A lot of you want to see something other than indices and I understand that makes sense. So I will show you a quick markup. Um, I'm not going to run through a full trade. You guys obviously just saw how I did it. It works the same way on regular pairs. But I will just show you how like a couple of these 
vertical lines placed on some basic pairs, seeing where the RSI and stochastic cross. And just so you can kind of see a couple of other uh, situations and scenarios. I'll mark off some buys and some sells for you just to kind of get an idea. And you can look and see how they go. If you have a specific pair you trade, please do your own testing on it. I do not trade every single Forex pair there is, and I never have, and I never will. So do your own homework on this. Okay, so this is an example um, just on a basic pair. This is GBPUSD, and I did switch to a different time frame just so you guys can kind of see what it would look like. This is on the 15 minute time frame. Um, and just real quick, kind of showing you what this setup looks like now. This is actually the live market right now. You guys can see um, that the all the stuff you needed happened. So I did mark up, like I told you, you should be doing is your support and resistance. So you can see clearly, this is obviously an area here for uh, the market as far as resistance go. Lots of touches, it hasn't broken through. And then this is a nice little support area that you can see has been forming. So, um, and if you look over to the left, obviously there's more, like always, like I said, there's always gonna be areas, lots of touches in here. And then as far as our other uh, support zone, you can see down over here, lots of touches. So if you're ever not sure where to actually go, just roll over to the left and I, it'll tell you it'll be there. The market has not been there yet, that price point. You will need to figure out how to calculate like an idea of where it might be going and an ATR would be good for that. Something that would give you the average move for that specific pair that you are trading. So let's just show you the example really quick so I don't confuse you. Um, as far as the rules, you know, you're going to do your first steps, like I said, and then you are going to make sure your indicators line up once you have done all of your support and resistance zones and an idea of where you want the market to go. So for this example, you can see the RSI does cross over uh, the white line and you're down below the 50, which means you're looking for sell opportunities. And the stochastic RSI is also crossing in a selling motion. So this is actually a really good trade. I would really like to take this trade because one, you're rejecting off, as you can see, this candle, the entry candle that we have here, you are rejecting off of a support, or sorry, a resistance area. And you can see that there's been lots of touches there. So this is a trade I would actually think was a good one to take. And then you would be targeting the support zone as your first take profit one. So that is how that would be marked up. You can see it's actually already played out pretty well. And then take profit two, the market doesn't exist here yet because it hasn't happened. But previously when price was there, it liked to kind of consolidate in this area. So you can see that um, potentially price will drop down to take profit two. And if it does, that's the area we would be targeting. And take profit three would be here. As far as managing your trade, in the previous example, it would be the same way. You're taking 50 off at take profit one, take profit two, 25%, take profit three, the remaining 25%, or you could leave it open for a take profit four potentially, targeting a break in structure, like complete structure, which would mean it drops below this area. Um, but you want to make sure you are securing your profit, so you are going to be taking 15% and only leaving 10 or less opened. That is it. That way you're at least you're secure and making sure that you will not lose money and make sure you are trailing your stop loss like I kind of said previously in the first example. And I'll show you another example over here. This is, ooh, I'm moving my stuff. Uh, this is a buy example over here. You can see that way uh, you guys aren't too confused because I've only been sh showing you sales up until now. So let me show you a buy. As far as the marking up goes, you can clearly see this is a very strong area of support and resistance. So here is your support zone and your resistance is up here where all these touches happen, all this consolidating happens. And then you will see that um, as far as entering, you get the conditions to enter. So you have your RSI above 50 here. It's like right there. And then you have your stochastic crossing in that direction. So you would enter in on this candle here. I'll move it so you can see, but that's your entry candle. Once again, kind of like this one I showed you, it's pretty close to, it's kind of showing like a nice rejection off of this area, this price. 
So I would be interested in this candle. Your stop loss would be slightly below that area of support. And then you'd be targeting the next area, like the just the, uh, the top area of resistance where it had been for your take profit one. Take profit two, you would just be looking over to the left here to see like what there is. And you can see over here, there was like a lot here. There were some touches here. There's some touches, you know, so that's where you'd be looking to be um, getting into that area. I liked this area. Like I said, I'm a little more cautious when it comes to my take profits, but if you want it to be a little more riskier, you could have won here. And either way you would have gotten it, but that's how you would do that. If you wanted to do a take profit three, you'd probably be looking somewhere above this, like in this area, because you have a lot going on in here, which would have happened. Um, you can see it happens there. So you would have gotten that as well, managing this the same way as all the other ones I told you. So that is it for this video. I hope that this helped you guys. Uh, for those of you who are free members, if you have questions, please feel free to ask. I am more than happy to help you as much as I can. Please ask though in Artie's Discord. Try to keep, um, I try to keep people separated just so I know who I'm helping and not helping. So if you are gonna ask questions about it, please ask in there. If you have amazing results or testimonials, please share them. I love to see that you guys are like doing amazing things with these strategies. If you are a paid member, I hope this helped you and I hope it clarified a little bit for those of you who have been struggling with entries because I think a big part of it was you have been missing marking up the charts, so focused on just using indicators and although they are amazing, you do still have to do something. So please try to incorporate marking up your charts prior to using the LMI and RSIs together. And please let me know if this is helping you. Um, if you are the paid members, you know you're going to be using the LMI the same way I showed with the RSI, except you will have a crossover and a color change. And yours will probably look a little bit smoother. You can see the RSI gets a little kind of crazy sometimes. Yours will have more of a smooth look to yours. Um, but either way, whether you are a free member or a paid member, just let me know if you do have questions and just make sure you're asking in the proper Discord. So free members, please ask in the moving average Discord. Those who are paid members, please feel free to ask me in the pink room. You know that's our room. I answer anybody back in that room that is using my strategies. So that helps me kind of keep you guys all separated. Also, please at me if you are going to ask something specific that you need answered back because I have insanely like crazy number of messages that I get. I have so much volume coming the, uh, as far as message goes between the two discords. If you do not at me, I will not see it. I just cannot physically keep up with all the chats. So if you at me, that is your way of saying like, hey, Christy, pay attention to what I just said. And I will see it then. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.